Hello and welcome to this cyber network training module for the Cisco CCMP security VPN exam. In this module we are going to configure a basic Cisco signless SSL VPN as well as creating and applying bookmarks to the VPN. So before we open the ASDM to start our configuration of the VPN, we will look at the steps required to set up a basic clientless SSL VPN. The first step is to make sure that we have a domain name and DNS servers configured to allow the VPN to resolve host names on the internal network. Next, we will enable SSL on the outside interface of the Cisco ASA. Then we will create a connection profile and configure an alias and group URL for our SSL VPN. Finally, we will create a user account which we will use to log in to our clientless SSL VPN. So we have finally come to the configuration stage of the clientless SSL VPN. And as you can see, I have opened up the ASDM at the home screen. So to get to the section where we configure the VPN, we click on the configuration button and then select remote access VPN. So the first step we need to perform is to configure a DNS server and domain name. To do that, we click on DNS under the remote access VPN section. Now you have the option to configure a DNS server or multiple servers if they are available to you. In our network topology, our DNS server has the IP address of 10.10.10.200, which we enter as our primary DNS server. If we had multiple DNS servers, we would enter each DNS server's IP address on a uline in this box below. The next step is to configure the domain name for our network, which is cnt.local. For the final part of our DNS configuration, we need to enable DNS lookups on the interface on which our DNS server can be contacted. Otherwise, the ASA firewall will not be able to resolve any DNS names for items such as bookmarks, which we will look at shortly. Our DNS server is via the inside interface, so we click on the option false beside the interface name and select true. The DNS settings are now configured, so we can now click apply to enable the settings on the firewall. The next step now is to enable the SSL VPN on an interface on our firewall. To do this, click on the plus sign to the left of clientless SSL VPN access under the remote access VPN and then click on connection profiles. In this screen we are able to configure the interface that the SSL VPN will be enabled on as well as options regarding the login page for the VPN. And this is also where we will create our connection profiles. Next, we want to enable the SSL VPN on the outside interface of our firewall. So to do that, we just need to click on the tick box beside the interface name. Next, we want to create a connection profile that contains the settings that are part of the pre-login phase that we discussed in an earlier module. As you can see, there are two connection profiles already configured on the firewall. These are two default connection profiles that can be modified but not deleted. And because the VPN settings are inherited, from the default connection profiles, that means that any settings that you have not configured in a separate connection profile 
will be inherited from these default profiles. The default RA group profile is used for client-based VPNs such as the AnyConnect and IPsec client VPNs, whereas the default web VPN group profile is used for the clientless SSL VPN. To create our connection profile, we need to click on the Add button under the Connection Profile section, and this opens the window to configure the connection profile. The first option we need to configure is the name of the connection profile. In this example, we are going to name the profile CNT-IT Support as this VPN will be used by our imaginary IT support team. The other options that can be configured in this window are the profile alias, which we will look at shortly, the authentication methods, so for example you can configure the profile to use the local firewall user database, or set up a AAA server group, at this stage of the configuration, we will use the local user database. Next is the DNS server settings that we configured earlier, so we don't need to make any changes to it. And finally, we have the default group policy that is applied to any user that logs into the VPN using this connection profile, which we will cover later in the module. The next steps are to configure the profile alias and group URL. To configure these options, expand the advanced option and select clientless SSL VPN. The alias allows a user to select the connection profile they want to use when logging into the VPN via a drop down box on the login page. This allows the user to select a different profile if they have access to a number of different connection profiles. To add the alias, click on the Add button under the Connection Alias section. This will open the Add Alias window and we will enter IT Support as the alias for this profile. Ensure that the Enabled option is ticked and click OK. Next we will add the group URL that performs the same function as the alias, but instead of the user selecting an option from a drop down box on the home page, the user has a specific URL that allows them to connect directly to the appropriate profile by using this URL. To add the URL, click on the Add button below the Group URL section. And when the Add Group URL window appears, enter the full URL that will be used by the end user. In our example, we will enter https colon slash slash 152.65.2.1. Forward slash IT support for our group URL. Ensure that the enable option is ticked and click OK. Now that we have our basic connection profile settings complete, click the OK button to close the profile settings window. Before we apply the settings, we need to enable the option allow user to select connection profile on the login page as this will display a drop down box on the login page with a list of the available connection profiles that have an alias configured. Now that this is enabled we can apply the settings. So now that we have configured our basic SSL VPN, we will now create a test user account on the firewall to allow us to log into the SSL VPN. 
To do this, you need to expand the AAA Local Users option and select Local Users. To add a new user, click on the Add button to the right hand side and this will open the Add User Account window. The first option is to give the account a username. For this example, we are going to create an account with the username support1 and we are going to give it a password of Cisco. As the account will only be used to access the VPN, it has no requirements to access the ASDM or to be able to SSH to the firewall itself. So we select the option no ASDM, SSH, Telnet or console access. Now we want to set this account to be only able to log in to the IT support SSL VPN. To do this, click on the VPN policy option and in this window you can set options such as time restrictions for logging into the VPN, the idle time or specify an IP address for this user when the account is using the AnyConnect client to log into a VPN. But the option that we are interested in is the connection profile tunnel group lock. This allows the user account to be locked to a specific connection profile. By default this option is inherited from the default policy. To select the IT support profile, untick the inherit option and select CNT IT support option from the drop down. Once you have done this, click OK to confirm and close the window. Finally, click apply to push the settings to the firewall and we will now be ready to log on to and test our VPN. So to test our SSL VPN from our test PC we have opened our web browser and all we need to do is enter the URL for the outside interface of our firewall which is https colon slash slash 152.65.2.1 and as we haven't installed a file certificate on the firewall we can accept this message and click continue. Ok, so now that the web page has loaded, this has confirmed that the SSL VPN is configured properly. So looking at the login box, you can see that there is a group drop down option, which is the alias that we configured for the connection profile when setting up the VPN. At the same time we also created a group URL and to use it you just need to enter the URL https colon slash slash 152.65.2.1 forward slash IT support. And this time we don't get the group option drop down box that was on the last web page. Ok, so now we will enter our username and password which was support1 and a password of Cisco and click login. And now we have successfully configured and logged into our SSL VPN. As you can see from the basic login page there isn't much for you to do. But in the upcoming videos, we will be looking at configuring the different options on the left hand side that give you access to network shares, terminal servers, etc.